down if you, you know, go and, you know, start Teddy. You know, and you're only going to most likely be starting Teddy Bridgewater for one year, and then he's going to walk. You know, because you're not going to franchise tag him. And six n- games. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just saying. And, 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 you know, you have to worry about, obviously, his knee. You have to, you know, you could maybe trade him at the trade deadline, but the deadline in football means nothing. Nothing ever happens on the trade deadline. The last thing Come I remember... Up. Garoppolo did happen. That's right. <clears throat> yeah. And I was going to say, other than that, the last thing I remember is Percy Harvin getting traded to the Jets. Oh, my God. I remember that. Which, which, that, that was good and all until... Uh, I love that trade, to the, be but honest But the only thing that, that jumps out at me is, uh, and, and the big thing that jumps out at me uh, that gives credence to the idea of starting him is the idea that now more than... Uh, maybe not... Uh, yeah, more than ever, you have a lot of quarterbacks who get hit. Newton, Wilson, Winston, Watson. All, that's a lot of W's. Uh, yes, it is. <laughs> oh, actually, you know what? In all seriousness, I'm going to give you the applause sound effect I, for not stuttering there. I, I just was like, what? Uh, and then Mar- Mariota. Really? Mariota, really? too. Job. So you have all these quarterbacks who are going to get hit a lot, which means well, higher those probability are of injuries. Quarterbacks, and that my point is, one of these teams might have a decent enough record where they're like, yeah, for one year it makes sense for us to go ahead and, and part with a second or a third or a couple of thirds for a guy like Teddy Bridgewater. Because I think I don't think he really is a part of the future, even if he does play for that year, because you know you ha- you drafted Sam Darnold for a reason. What if you're the Tennessee Titans and you and you trade for him and he has a great year for you? Here's Well, I don't think he's gonna start. I'm just saying I, well, Hold on, hold on. I'm saying if that happened, he, One he'd be thing. hurt, Mary. One quick thing. Oh. Great question, Nick, and this is where the two roads diverge into one, or you Madness. take the road less travel, what, whatever that stupid Robert Frost poem is. <laughs> uh, I studied it in English, and I hate it. I cannot stand Robert Frost, for goodness sake. Um, some teams will view Teddy Bridgewater as a backup. Teams like Miami, teams like Tennessee, Carolina, Denver. whoever. Maybe not Denver. I'm getting to Denver. So those teams wouldn't give up high draft picks. A team like Denver, they do not have a quarterback of the future. Case Keenum is not their quarterback of the future. Chad Kelly isn't. Paxton Lynch isn't. Oh, definitely It not. would make sense for them to trade for Teddy Bridgewater with the idea of, you know what? We're going to sit you for one year. If something happens to Keenum or if Keenum doesn't play well, you're going in. We can cut Keenum after this year. I texted you guys this. We can cut Keenum after this year and save some money, and you're our starter. Because Teddy Bridgewater is better than Case Keenum. I like Keenum. I do think he'll be okay as a game manager. But Bridgewater has proven that he has not missed a step at all. No. This is the same Teddy Bridgewater that led the Vikings to the playoffs and would have won if not for Blair Walsh. I will never forget where I was for that game. I went in for two seconds to get a Slurpee at 7-Eleven. <laughs> Next thing I know, the Vikings lose. And it's like... What the hell just happened? What did I miss? I just missed one of the biggest chokes in NFL history. I At mean, that time, especially. I mean, I do like Slurpees, so I guess all's well that ends well. Wow, you know what just hit me? The Vikings have had a lot of bad plays in their history. You have with that. You have the Minnesota Miracle. You have the Burger King running through their whole defense. Wrong way, Jim Marshall. Yeah, look it up. The Burger King once ran through their whole defense. It was very funny. They did have a good play, though. Which against, one? Against the Saints. Yes. Okay. <laughs> I guess that'll make up for it, even though yeah. they got destroyed Minnesota by the Miracles. Eagles. No, no, yeah, no, but no. they I, ended up losing no, to no, the no. Eagles. I, I, I was talking about having like bad plays on both ends. Oh, okay, okay, yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. that's what I was talking like about. Like broken plays. That, yeah. that, that play should yeah. never have happened. I did not explain that well. Also, that was on me. I just want to bring this up real quick before you move on past the Jets. Is that also, I know the ESPN uh, team yesterday said that, you know, the Jets are set up to have $90 million in cap space again, even with the transactions they made this year. And, if that doesn't scream, you have to get a, like some type of elite guy that you got to bring in. Nah, I don't know what does, and I think this year, obviously, I think playoffs are not going to happen. So you make it a year where you know it's more of the culture change, and you're going forward, and you're saying that you, you know you got this young team, and you're ready to grind it out and eventually get there. So that hopefully, these guys in free agency are going to want to come to New York. I was thinking about this as I was driving to get lunch, and I want to ask your opinion on it. Does the ninety million dollars concern you? Because it's clear that they don't have a core that they can rely on to make a big run? Um, no, I don't really think so. I think it's just that a lot of their players now, at least the, the good ones that they have, are young and they're still on their rookie contracts. So they really haven't gotten to paying them. The only one you got to pay next right now is Leonard Williams, which I but think. But even then, Williams is just good. 
He's not great. I think he can still take that next level step, though. I, th- I think you really haven't seen it because also you got to realize the defensive line. They're you know, doubling him. Yeah, they're doubling him. Every you know? single play. Yeah. Because Although Nathan Shepard did do well. Yeah, Nathan so Shepard I am help. looking forward to. Yeah, exactly. That, McClendon, too, if he plays. Henry Anderson even is doing just, you know, solid. Yeah, for Anderson's his, okay. He'll be a solid like role player. Nothing. I don't hate. I want the defensive line to be Williams, McClendon, Shepard. Yeah. That's what I want. I don't want Henry Anderson to start. He can play. I don't have a problem with him playing. Just. Definitely. Definitely not starter. Yeah, yeah I agree. don't start. Uh, so tonight, the Giants will face the Lions at Ford Field. What are your thoughts on the game? I will tell you this. Um, I'm excited to see Davis Webb again because I really do think... <laughs> no, just seriously. <laughs> seriously. Sorry. I do, I just, I do think... You know what's funny? In my franchise mode on Mad, Davis Webb is my backup quarterback. How do you do? Uh, I have Russell Wilson, so he's not okay, playing. Okay, yeah. So I mean, I don't, I don't blame you. But I, am... I had a choice. I could either pick Russell Wilson or Tom Brady. I'm going to take Russell Wilson because I'm only going to have Brady for a, a year season, or two. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Fair enough. Madden logic. Yeah, right. <laughs> yes. Ma- but how many glitches have you seen with this game? Holy Christmas! I, I honestly, I, I've been enjoying the game a lot. I, I'm chilling with six hundred thousand coins and Ultimate Team. You know, I'm <laughs> glad that I was able to help. By the way, <laughs> yes. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah. All so, right, so go ahead. No, it's okay. Yeah, go, no, it's go, okay. Go. I, you digress, okay? So um, <laughs> I'm, I'm right on point. So I, I am excited to see Davis Webb again because that first game where he came in, where he came in relief of Eli Manning, I'm convinced that he was totally amped up. I, I am very convinced that he was just very excited, very, you know, just excited to get back out there because Coach Shermer has came out and said that we keep telling him to just calm down. But... You know, the problem with him is that, you know, he knows that he could be the next guy in line, not even just if Eli Manning goes down, but if Eli Manning is not going to be on the team next year. But something that I do like, and Jacob, you'll appreciate this, Kyle Lalletta was interviewed one time, uh, probably like last week, and he said, no one told me that I'm going in as the third string. I'm going to be playing like I'm fighting for that job. So, you know what, that's going to be a um, a battle to watch. Because the Giants don't really have a quarterback controversy yet, because Eli doesn't really get hurt. But it's just like, who's going to be that next guy in line to uh, relieve him, if I'm possible? I'm just thinking back to last year when I said you needed a backup quarterback when we were talking about Geno Smith. And you said, no, don't worry about it, he'll never play. And then look what happened. That was really funny. That was my mind. I was so convinced that he was not going to play. <laughs> ben McAdoo. Ben McApoo, okay? Ben McAdoofus. Yeah, doofus. Mac yeah, and cheese. That's, that's my but, favorite. I had asked you a while ago during training camp, it may have even been before training camp. It was definitely last month, I know that. Is there a chance that Kyle Loletta can be the backup? And you said no. Now, I think you'll change your tune. I am, and I'm going to tell you why. Because There's nothing wrong with it. I just want no, to state that for the record. Totally no. And the only reason why I said no at that point was, I think I'm quoting myself verbatim, Davis Webb has been there longer. He did change systems, so he's still learning behind Eli just you know, a, couple, a, a year ahead of the curve you know, other than Laletta. But now, Laletta looks more comfortable They're right kind now. of in the same boat, though, in the sense that they're both learning new offenses. Though. Right, but I think... I think if you're talking to me in terms of what would Gettleman or Shermer want, now I think it's going to Lalletta because now it's their guy. That's the guy that they drafted very highly, too. Fourth but, round. Uh, you know what? And I give Senior you Senior Bowl MVP. And I didn't know a thing about him. But you know what? In did terms, I or did I not call him? You did. Early on in the process. You said Luke Falk and then you said Lalletta. So you said one of those two guys. Yeah. So, you know what? Kurt good. Benker, too, I did say. And he looked good against the Jets. I don't know what he's going to do this week. I don't even know if he's going to play. But Benker did have some good throws against the Jets. He did. Then but, again, their front seven is horrible. But they do have a good secondary. I will say that. But you know what? There's just some things that I want to look out for in terms of tonight's game against the Lions. The, the, the other one is... Uh, Khalif Raymond. Khalif Raymond is a wide receiver, and he's been getting he's some... He's a punt and kick returner. He used to be on the Jets. He muffed the ball twice and got cut. It was uh, when they played Oakland. They're, they're watching him... That, like a tour, a, like a year or two ago. They're watching him at wide receiver, too, and apparently he's been playing relatively good. Oh. But that kind of scares me, because if that's your next option next to Beckham and Shepard, that kind of scares me. It's why Bryant made sense. The fact that you let him go to Cleveland is infuriating to me as a Giant fan. Whether you think that he's a good fit for the Giants or not, the Giants are in win-now mode. You can't tell me that bringing in Des Bryant 
doesn't help you win when your slot guy or your third wide receiving option, whoever, is Khalif Raymond. Look, I will tell you this. Dom, it's the same point when you said, like, Des would fit on the Browns. If he's your third option behind, <laughs> yeah, your fans are pissed off, behind Josh 274 Gordon. 274 likes. Yeah. Uh, oh, my God. Know, and was not famous. <laughs> and look, you are right. If you can have Des Bryant in Cleveland right behind, you know, Josh Gordon and Jarvis Landry, you'd be pretty good. It's the same thing in New York. And it's not even that he'd be behind. You know, it, he's kinda, the third option. Yeah, you know what? That's what I meant. And with yeah. the uncertainty surrounding Gordon, you want that guy because the Browns are playing to win now. They're not going to make the playoffs, but they want that culture change. Also, I have to admit, Hard Knocks this year so far, I've been watching it. it it's really cool. It's actually making me kind of start to like the Browns, which I never thought I'd say, especially that they took Baker Mayfield <laughs> in the draft. But that's what they do. They make you like the Cincinnati Bengals and the I know. Dallas Cowboys. They somehow the Tampa make these Bay people likable. Yeah. But it's not just because you're Jets. in the room and not the Jets. No way. <laughs> I think it's really cool, Let's though. Let's go have a snack. <laughs> <laughs> I oh, love man. Jarvis Landry now, I'll tell you that. To be honest with I've you, I haven't, I haven't watched it. I should. Haven't you should watched definitely no, check it out. I haven't watched any of it yet. I I've, plan to. I've never seen one, but I really, really want to. But yeah, it, like, like I said, Seems like it's the lying. same. T- I'm not lying. <laughs> But, but I really, look, really want can to. I tell you what I'm going to miss about you is those like little undercut moments where you'll go, <laughs> seems like you're lying. You get really <laughs> close to the microphone Nick, and that's it. Nick, can I tell you, that's basically our relationship. He it's, trashes me just very subtly. Everyone else sees sentences. it, and then I see it finally. <laughs> oh, my God. you two started. Oh, man. You guys hated each other. Oh. You two. Dominic and Eric. I didn't hate him. He hated me. Oh. I wouldn't really <laughs> say that. that. I just I feel like you just wouldn't shut up. <laughs> 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 and you know what? You know what? I didn't because I was very excited. Yes, you were. Well, that's the same trap that a lot of people fall into. They either talk a lot or they don't talk at all. And you need to find that happy medium, which you found month. very fast. Hey, listen, a month is very fast. We do have a caller on the line. Caller, you're on Beyond the Game. Well, I've watched Hard Knocks. How come you have it? You watch Hard Knocks, Martin, from Merrick? What'd you think of it? I thought episode two was heart rendering, especially with Devin Kajus and his father. That, yes, I love Kajus now. He's like my favorite player. I, no, 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 if you watch the episode, you really will feel like what he's been going through. and it, it, They do we, a really great job we with gotta it. we got to get this guy on the show, man. Oh, I, my God. David Kajus? Fine. Devin Kajus. I, Devin, sorry. Not he's o- not your favorite player anymore. <laughs> not only did I watch it, but I saw the clips of his of his father, you know, interacting with his son, and I happen to know his father personally. Do you really? Oh, wow. Yes. Oh wow, cool. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I mean, as, as you guys have said, the, uh, they're a local family. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, it's a nice feel-good story with Kajust. He was undrafted, and he does have a real chance to make the Browns as their backup tight end behind Njoku. I'm rooting for him, so Martin, you can keep me up to date with him. I will consider that a personal job. All right. Sounds good. Thanks for the call. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. You want to know what's funny, Jacob? I yeah. started a, a Madden Connected franchise with the Jets, and I made him my starting tight end. <laughs> <laughs> and he got up to 99 overall. <laughs> you are listening to Beyond the Game on the voice of Nassau Community College, 90.3 WHPC. We are live twice a week, Tuesdays at 5 p.m. and Fridays at 3 p.m. I am Jacob Volk, sitting across from me, Dominic Arbolino, Eric Fischetti, and Nick Ornberger. Number to call if you have something on your mind is 516-572-7440. And the reason that my voice just got sullen is because I have to read this. This is Dominic's last Beyond the Game. With that in mind, the floor is yours to give a retrospective of, of your time. Go. Just go. All right. Wow. Are you serious? I'll yeah. go. Uh, yeah, this has been a wild ride the past year and a half to two years. It's... It's it's honestly pretty crazy that it's already up. I I these past two years have flew by. I thought it was going to be like you know a nice slow ride, and I have to you know really push through it. But you know coming here at the end of the first semester was a good change to make me uh, get through it. And yeah, I, I'm very grateful that I was able to join this show. I'm just happy I joined this show instead of the other ones. But <laughs> <laughs> sorry, Sean. But uh, one, one <laughs> thing that I was always grateful for, I never said this. This goes to you, Eric, also, but I'll address it to Dominic since it's his last show. 
I was always grateful that you never pushed for your own show, that you were that happy here, because you would have been a fantastic host. You were a fantastic host when I wasn't here. Thank you. And I was always honored for you having enough faith in me and what I was trying to do here that you didn't make that push. Yeah, definitely. I mean, uh, you know, I never really felt I, you know, had the need to. You know, we always talked about, you know, what was always trending. It was never like, you know, anything I didn't want to talk about. So, you know, it, it was going well. And I, I, I think my first memory with you is that when I first came in to sit on the show and it was the Colin Kaepernick situation.